Uh, hi, I'm Daniel. Uh, I'm going to be doing a rather short talk so you can all get lunch early. So that's a plus. Um, called Utilizing the Web uh, or How I Learned to Rip Off Dr. Strangelove. Um, and we're going to start by doing some fun stuff. Um, we're going to be looking at a website, uh, see what it does, try it out, uh, and then we'll talk about what's needed uh, to make a site like that and uh, how can you implement it? How did you usually implement it in the past? How would you implement it now? And how would you possibly implement it in the future? Um, the site we're going to look at uh, is called Color Roulette. It's a bit like Chat Roulette uh, in that you get to meet strangers. You don't chat with them. Well, you can, but you, you, you almost shouldn't. Uh, and you don't see them on camera, but you draw with them. Um, so what you draw will end up, end up on their screen, and what they draw will end up on your screen. And you can collaborate on whatever. You could use it as a whiteboard, or you could use it to broadcast a drawing you're making to uh, a lot of people, uh, as I'm explaining here. Um, it's, oh, OK, uh, I may have mistyped here. Well, it <laughs> implements everything that uh, we will be seeing in this talk, uh, and it does it quite well. Um, so uh, without further ado, let's go to this address. Uh, you can click on the Collaborate button and then enter the ID Apache Khan. Uh, and let's see if it works. Is that home already? What? Is that home already? Uh, yes, it works with phones and tablets as well. Uh, so I'm just going to go see if I can get the mouse here. There you go. Collaborate, enter. And I'll see that someone has already drawn something. And uh, if anyone wants to join in, they can draw on this. And I'll just do it. I can't see what I'm doing. You see someone is writing something. Uh, the Wi-Fi is making it a bit uh, <laughs> jumpy, but uh, I think it works. And I can go in and select the color and make a square down here. Whoops, or I can write some text. There you go, very small. Uh, and it uh, scales, so it's a scale of a vector graphics list. Uh, so. And you can see people joining and people leaving. The I can't see it, I have to go over here. Uh, we have eight people in this room online in this drawing right now. And you can see it lighting up when people are drawing something who's uh, drawing. Um, so that's quite a fun sight. Uh, let me just get the mouse back here. Uh, OK, I'll give you <laughs> a couple of seconds to draw something. OK, that was Rich drawing a pony, <laughs> obviously. Um, <laughs> so that's uh, something you can, you can do. Uh, where's my mouse? And you can chat with other people as well down here. Uh, no one's writing anything. Oh, text to the public, yeah. So that's, uh, that's fun. Um, but uh, enough of this. Um, let's go back uh, and see um, how we can deconstruct it. How can we make a system that's both bi-directional uh, and allows us to share information with a third party. Uh, how would we traditionally do this uh, in the, the old uh, HTTP 1.0 days or whatever? Um, and how should we do, it, do this uh, with modern technology? Um, so what we need is a method of receiving the data from the client when you draw something, when you write something in the chat. Uh, we need a method of sending live data to back to the client when someone else does something, or when you do something, it, it needs to go to the, to the other people watching the, the, the online drawing. Uh, we need a method of utilizing the live data on the client side, that is receiving it in, in some transfer protocol that we may have invented or not. Uh, and we need to figure out how we can multicast this, how we can spread out to, to uh, 10,000 people at once this, the, the same data. 
uh, traditionally we would use multiple post requests to, to store data. Whenever someone would draw something, it would go into a post request to the server. The server would then store it in an <laughs> SQL database uh, just for the kicks. Um, and we would possibly use uh, long polling with perhaps chunked encoding to receive the live data. Uh, but this has some, some issues with it. Uh, one of the issues is that multiple post requests, it's quite cumbersome, as you can imagine. It has a um, relatively high latency because every time you do a post request, you have to reinitialize the request, you have to read the request, you have to initialize the whatever virtual machine you're doing your scripts on, you have to establish a database connection, and so on, and so on, and so on. Uh, so you need a far more processing power and processing time than you, will, you do with modern technologies. Um, SQL is slow, and uh, I, I haven't really figured out how to do pop stop from SQL, because you'd, you'd have to constantly select for changes, uh, figure out how to select the changes, have to select the changes, go through all the tables, all the, the rows in the database, um, to get the latest stuff um, and figure out tons of ways to, to actually get this distributed in, in the right way to people. Uh, and thirdly, you have to store it as a table, which is not ideal for, for everything. If you want to invent a new column, you can't just, well, you can do that, but you can't just do it on the fly. Um, so. For me personally, I, I like to store stuff in, in, in JSON objects where I can just add or delete uh, row, columns as I see fit. Um, long polling with chunk encoding, it's, again, it's cumbersome. Uh, you would probably have to create your own transfer scheme, or scheme. Um, and it may or may not work. Uh, I don't know if you remember the old IRC over HTTP clients that would send uh, chunk, chunks of JavaScript in, in a small hidden frame that would then do document or window dot write ln uh, whatever line was being uh, pushed. Um, but you, you can't really guarantee that the browser will execute, for example, a JavaScript that is sent as chunked encoding. It might wait until the chunked encoding is finished sending everything and then do it all at once, or it, it might not do it at all. Um, so instead, you could use the, the XML HTTP request. Uh, but again, if you go back to the, the post request fudge, it's cumbersome. It has a high latency, even with Keep Alive. Uh, and you need quite a lot of processing power for that. Um, and again, you, you can end up with uh, quite a lot of Keep Alive connections that way if you do tons of XML HTTP requests. So that's not ideal either. Um, so the modern solution would be to use WebSockets for transferring data and a NoSQL backend with a PubSub model um, and hopefully some exist existing client uh, APIs on the client side for dealing with this uh, transfer mechanism. Um, what I did for, for the color roulette was, was using uh, WebSockets via Matlua, because that's my little baby in the HTTP server project. Um, and it's uh, also the only module, well, almost the only module we have that supports WebSockets. We have a proxy module as well. Uh, but then you'd have to implement uh, a backend for, for that as well. I use uh, Redis as a backend for storing the, the, the JSON objects because it supports both. You can store stuff as a list and you can listen as a PubSub. Uh, I should explain PubSub is publisher, subscriber. Uh, it's a mechanism where you can subscribe to some form of data and others can publish to that uh, data ID and it will be broadcast to you. Uh, and that's something you can do in, in Redis. Um, so that's very nice to have. Um, WebSockets, they're described in RFC 6455, if you want to read all about it. Um, it's ex as close as you can come to the traditional two-way TCP uh, communication um, and still use it within the, the HTTP server. Um, 
And there are two big advantages. The first is that messages are already packed as frames as a uh, data transferring protocol in, in WebSockets for, for transferring data and how to pack it up like a, uh, just like, a, for example, a zip file or a tar file, file um, and send it and, and unpack it on the other side. Um, and there are existing JavaScript APIs for this. Uh, it's, as I'll show, it's, it's real easy to, to implement this in JavaScript and it's real easy on the server side as well. Um, how it works is the HTTP server receives uh, just a normal HTTP request uh, with an upgrade request header. Um, and then the server sends a, a 101 back, which means upgrade succeeded. Um, and the connection gets upgraded, and, and then you can send some frames back and forth and, and have a great time. And this is how a request and a response uh, can look like. As you can see, the request to the client sends an, an upgrade request for web sockets. Uh, and the server response that it's switching protocols and it's switching to web sockets. There are some uh, web socket keys and some web socket, socket accept uh, stuff that I won't go into, but that's some uh, much like an SSL handshake to make sure that it's the right, uh, right server and client that are talking together. Um, messages are, as I said, packed into frames with, a, first we have a, a, a bit mask which is, um, yeah, you should just accept that it exists. It, it serves no purpose. Um, it's mostly an annoyance. Um, uh, the the bit, bit mask is uh, something that gets applied to the everything that you send uh, as data. Um, uh, it's supposedly made to ensure that data doesn't get garbled or I, I don't know. Um, I haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> the second thing is an opcode, uh, which tells you uh, the, the client or the server whether this is um, a ping or a data or, or if we're closing the connection. Uh, and then we have the length of the data that's going to be sent. And if this length equals 127, then we have an additional extended length which can be up to 64 bits, so you can send really, really large frames within web sockets. And finally, we have the, 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 the bit mask encrypted data, uh, and a final frame called fin, which it actually is just saying, is this the final frame we're sending right now, or is this part of multiple frames we're sending? Um, and, and that's, I, I guess it's useful, as you can see, my little drawing of how it works then. Um, this is how you implement WebSockets in JavaScript. As you can see, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lines of code. Um, you just say socket equals new WebSocket, and then on message, you get uh, some function that does whatever with the data, and it can send a message back. And all this gets packed up and bitmask encrypted, and so on, yeah, you don't have to worry about it uh, on the client side and on the server side. It's just a SQL, you say, can we upgrade to WebSockets? If we can, we write a message to the client saying, welcome to WebSockets. And we try to read uh, something from the client. And if we get something from the client, we write back, you wrote, and the data we received. And then we close the WebSocket connection again, or we could Pull, uh, do a while true, sleep for a second, and then print something, sleep for a second, and then print something. Um, this is how you use web sluggers in PHP. Um, you can't yet. Um, maybe you should. I, I, I think it's possible to, to implement it, uh, but I don't like PHP, so I'm not going to do the work. Um, there's a bit of a, a fudge, if you can say, with the, this is that currently WebSockets on Modlua are blocking when you try to read something. So if the client is expecting to read something from the server and the server is expecting to read something from the client, nothing is going to happen for the next 30 seconds until you get a timeout. Uh, that's a shame. And PHP, yeah, doesn't support it at all. 
So what I initially did, um, the, the clutch I did was use when WebSockets and server sent events, server sent events. Uh, so the WebSockets would, would be used for the client to send data to the server. The server, the server would always do a blocking read because it's not sending anything, it's just reading. Uh, and then I would use the server sent events for reading stuff from the server, the, the live data that gets uh, transmitted back. And as I said, read as uh, a, a backend for the inter protocol communication pops up, whatever. Uh, server sent events is, it, it really should have been at the start of this presentation because it's the easiest thing to, to, to get started with. It's a pure one way communication, just like a, a normal HTTP request. Uh, response, um, but it replaces the multiple requests or the long polling with junk responses that we used to have. Um, and it's much easier because it integrates just like WebSockets seamlessly into JavaScript. Um, it's a text-based frame system, uh, very, very simple. You set the content type to a text slash event stream, uh, and every response sent from the server can uh, usually contains a data string and an optional ID. It can contain anything. Um, you can invent objects on the fly, and it will work in, in JavaScript as well. Uh, this is an example of what uh, the reply from the server looks like. So I'm saying ID equals one, two, three, four, and data equals some JSON string, and then two new lines, and I can send another thing uh, the 1235 data equals some other JSON objects, and I can make up uh, an, a new object called foo. Um, and this is how you can do it in PHP, for example. Um, as you can see, it's, it's very simple. Uh, for each second, you send a JSON object that says the current time is this and this. Um, and in your browser, you will do this. Very simple. You just two lines of code, and you have server send events implemented in your browser. You don't need to invent some way of transferring chunk and coding and decrypting it and whatever. You just uh, use the e.data, which is the, the data string that was sent before, or I could use e.foo to get the foo string that I sent, or e.id, or whatever. Um, so it's, it's very simple to use. There are some caveats to, to what I'm doing, uh, and that's you need two permanent threads um, to do this coloring roulette stuff. Uh, and eventually, you're going to run out of threads if you have 10,000 people trying to um, use this, this service at once. Um, use double the memory, double the DB connections. Um, so it's basically half as good as it should be, um, but it's not bad, but uh, it, it could be better. So my, I think it's my final slide now. Uh, the optimal solution it, uh, would be to use my proxy WS tunnel uh, with a proper WebSocket backend so you can use bidirectional communication probably from, uh, via WebSockets, or you could, um, we could hope that 2.4.10 gets released soon, because has the I forgot to backport it in 2.4.9. I'm sorry, uh, but it's there now. We have a peak neck mechanism in Model Lua, so we can see is the client sending anything, and if it isn't, we can continue to write to it, uh, so we don't get the blogging reads. Uh, does it say click to add title? No. Um, finally, uh, if you can just watch this for about 10 minutes and feel refreshed and wiser. Um, unfortunately, that's the end. So, any questions, Eric? Yeah, it is. Um, I, I don't have the source code with me right now, but uh, it's uh, basically Marlua connects to Redis through uh, a Redis library, uh, and it just says, uh, pops up to this 
particular string, which is the um, the Doodle ID uh, Patchicon, for example, and it just listens. It, it sits there idle. Right now, it sits there idle. Um, actually, no, I can't do it with one. I have to do it with two because of the pops up, uh, because that's not. Uh, it's a blocking read. Um, so you're absolutely correct. You win the internet. So. Hmm. Yeah, you you could, but it, it it's easier to just use two connections. Um, so, that's it. Any more questions? Yes, in the back. You could use that with the mod proxy WS tunnel, for example. Uh, so uh, I'm I'm just not that much into Node.js uh, yet. Uh, for various reasons, um, but you could use that as well um, and connect to to a, a pops up backend. Uh, this is just um, this is the ASF. This is Apache Con, so I wanted to show some Apache solutions to it. So, any more questions? Yeah, Alan. Is the Redis shared among is it shared among HTTP servers to give you higher limit on the thread than connections? Hmm. The Redis backend. Yeah. Yeah. So you could scale your thread by putting more servers on Yeah, I, I could. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, thank you for still being here. And, and that's it. Uh, they're not located anywhere uh, yet, but I, I will have them up and I will uh, tweet about it. You can put them in the standard mode. You can put them in the Linux Foundation. Yeah. Uh, I have some prelimina preliminary sketches up there, but I'll, I'll put it on the Linux Foundation. Okay, well, thank you.